Curse of the Week. Shaka Zulu. When discussing the most bone-crushingly badass military empires of Sub-Sahara Africa, there's only really one word that comes to mind. Zulu. Of all the myriad tribal leaders, tyrannical despots, and vicious totalitarian warlords that have exerted their will across the war-torn region from prehistory to the modern day, no power-hungry madman has been able to surpass the ass-kicking legacy of the Zulu Empire and its fearsome ability to carve out a mighty empire one impaled corpse at a time. The fearless warriors of this 19th century powerhouse made a name for themselves by ferociously charging lance first into combat anywhere they could find it, massacring their foes with machetes and spears, and even sticking it to the world's most advanced European powers when they came around for a heavyweight title match of badassitude. Of all the Zulu leaders who ever commanded the empire during this period, one man stands sack and shoulders above the rest when it comes to unrivaled badassitude. The infamous Shaka Zulu. The military mastermind behind the Zulu Empire and one of the most hardcore tyrants who ever lived. For a mighty Zulu chieftain who would go on to expand his tribe's numbers from a mere 1,500 people to 250,000 strong empire spanning over 2 million square miles, Shaka's origins are actually a little less than epic. Far from face planting the planet at warp factor 5 along with a few thousand chunks of planet Krypton, Shaka was born to human parents in 1787. The, Ill the illegitimate son of a minor Zulu chief and his fiancée, a woman, by the way, the chief hadn't actually had sex with yet. The promiscuous bride-to-be blamed her pregnancy on some kind of Virgin Mary-style immaculate conception or some shit like that, but nobody really bought that excuse. The, unnamed ki the unwanted kid was named Shaka, which, of course, is derived from the Zulu term Ishaka, while you think it would be humiliating enough to be named after something that sounds like something Steve Jobs would come up with in response to the shake weight, it's actually the Zulu term for particularly for a particular type of intestinal parasite, which is somehow less flattering. It's like being named Dysentery Jones or Hookworm Johnson. Other fun nicknames for young Shaka included That Bastard and The One With No Father. He and his mother were exiled from their tribe and forced to live as outcasts, where, which sucked everyone's asses on fire. Being named after a microbe gave Shaka sort of a boy named Sue complex, and he ended up spending most of his time, most of his youth, pummeling the fuck out of any neighborhood kids that talk shit about his name, his bastardness, or his mother's honor. His ability to rearrange the bone structure of his enemy's faces with little more than a clenched fist and a whole lot of pent-up rage soon earned young Shaka a place of honor among as a Zulu warrior in service to the chieftain, where he would put his destructiveness to good use against the enemies of his people. In his time in the army, Shaka learned tactics, strategy, and how to effectively kill the largest number of people in the shortest amount of time, which is kind of useful if you're into that sort of thing. Shaka showed so much aptitude for destruction, in fact, that after the death of Shaka's father, the Zulu king appointed Shaka war chief of his tribe. The Shaka Zulu's first act as war chief was to dispatch his warriors to kill the fuck out of everyone who ever talked shit about him or his mom, mostly because those guys were bastards and Shaka didn't really want a bunch of dickheads serving in his army anyway. He then went on to completely revamp the way the Zulu fought war. You see, up until this point in history, Sub-Sahara Africa warfare, African warfare was pretty much one of the most retarded things ever. Two groups of warriors would basically line up 50 feet apart from each other, shout insults about the sexual practices of the enemy's women, throw a couple of javelins, and then run away screaming about how awesome they were. Shaga, being a man of extreme skull-crushing violence, decided that war would be a shitload more effective if people actually died from it. So, in the end, he threw away the cowardly javelins and replaced them with big, heavy, fuck-off spears named, As named Asagai. Then, to further epitomize his warrior's effectiveness in close-quarters combat, 
he redesigned the Zulu shield, making it bigger, more durable, and, believe it or not, actually fucking useful. After equipping his army with more practical implements of eye-stabbing awesomeness, Shaka went on to went to work making his men a thoroughly ball as thoroughly balls out as possible. He organized them into regiments and formations, made them run barefoot 50 miles a day through the savanna, and taught them techniques for using their shield to hook and pull their enemy shields and expose the guy's ribs for a totally bitchin' shanking to the ribs. During his most brutal, intense training in the art of badass, any man under his command who showed pain, complained, or dropped a weapon was executed on the spot as a coward. With this redesigned army of badass warriors under his command, Shaka Zulu went on to rampage, went on a rampage of aorta-piercing aorta destruction across sub-Sahara Africa. His radical reformations would, ch would his radical formations would charge into battle fighting with a ferocity never seen before on the savanna, and his warriors massacred any punks, any punks dumb shit enough to stand in his path. No one could stop him. When a rival tribe apparently bitchified, when a rival tribe was appropriately bitchified by Shaka, he would give the vanquished douchebags two options, join the Zulu and renounce their native tribe, or receive a catastrophic puncher wound to the brain. Most of his victims took the significantly more appealing option, and as a result, Shaka was one of the few military commanders from history who finished a war with a bigger army than when he started. When he had assumed control over the entire Zulu nation after the death of the king in 1817, Shaka ruled over 300 war 350 warriors and 1,500 citizens. At the time of his death 10 years later, he led 40,000 warriors. 250,000 civilian citizens and claimed 2 million square miles of territory for his people, arguably the most powerful African empire since ancient Egypt. Shaka was first and foremost a military ass kicker. He preferred to charge headfirst into battle in the front of his men, decked out in a personal, in a presumably awesome looking uniform made out of blue monkey fur and was always more comfortable fighting a war than administrating over the mundane bullshit of a kingdom. So as a ruler, he was kind of a psychotic lunatic. Sure, he made diplomatic contact with the British and established trade routes, but th this guy generally preferred mass executions and public witch burnings. He claimed he could smell witches to anything resembling to agrarian reform or due process under the law. Perhaps the best demonstration of this was how Shaka completely flipped his shit after his mom died. The distraught ruler ordered a three month period of mourning for all the Zulu people in which no one was allowed to eat anything. Then he killed some cows so that the calves would know what it's like to lose a mother and went around executing 77,000 people who quote unquote didn't look sad enough. As you could probably imagine, this sort of behavior didn't win a whole win you a whole lot of support, popular support. And in 1828, Shaka was murdered to death by his brothers, who dumped his body in an unmarked grave and buried him under a bunch of heavy ass rocks. Despite his inglorious end at the sharp end of a bro slashing knife, Shaka Zulu had already established one of the most dominant sub-Sahara African kingdoms in history. His successors would continue implementing the military tactics he designed, further expanding the borders of the Zulu Empire, and would even win a major battle against the British at Isla Nwana 50 years later.